Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us this evening. We're very excited. We're going to be talking to Dr. Chris, Dr. Chris Shade, who will help to guide us in this understanding and overview of what people really are caring about as it relates to the process of detox. And detox is a word that you obviously have heard a lot about. Welcome, we're getting excited. People are starting to join in. Um, it's a word that, that you hear about all the time, Dr. Chris. And if you were to define detox for us as a detox researcher, an expert in this field that I have the most respect and admiration for. I just want everybody that's um, starting to tune in. We're excited you're here. I want your questions. Dr. Chris wants your questions. We really want to make this a working session where everyone by the end of it feels that they have a deeper understanding of their own biology and how to detox. But I want to start with um, Dr. Chris, you really just telling us what does detox mean to you and how many years have you been researching it? Well, let's start with the easy one first, and that's how long I've been researching this. And, uh, you know, I peripherally did it in grad school where I was looking at environmental toxicology, but uh, it's, it's funny how little toxicology actually looks at the process of detoxification. Uh, but I've been looking actively at it since about 2008. So we got a decade where not just actively, like obsessively, like it's the only thing that I do. And detoxification is about cleaning the mirror. It's about taking things that are interfering with your proper function and getting them out of the way so that the natural brilliance of your biology can shine. We get very stuck into this idea that it's the energy drink and it's the energizing supplement that's going to give us the energy, but the clarity and function of your biology is your God-given right. It is what naturally shines forth. And there's a really beautiful depth to the research on detoxification. When it's real research, they're talking about chemo prevention. And you'll find most of the research into the body's mechanism for moving things out of the cells that aren't supposed to be in there and out of the blood that aren't supposed to be in there. It's all called chemo protection. And the best of it that describes the mechanisms most in the most detailed way is in the cancer journals, where they talk about removal of the free radical generating offenders, which are capable of causing mutations leading to cancer generations. And so it's this whole chemistry that you have is to take the stuff out that's interfering in the proper working of your machinery. And when it's not working, the toxins will hold you down at a neurological level. They'll hold you down at an energy level, and they'll hold you down at an immunological level, and even just a general well-being. And if you want me to go deeper into that, I will, because I'd like to explain how it hits every one of those parts. Yes, I think we would love that. Um, let me just ask you um, to comment on our largest organ, our skin. And you were talking about the immune system and how the detox is so important um, as it relates to, you know, all of these three areas. But I was very surprised to learn, it was probably a couple of years ago, that we, I know that we absorb at least 60% of what we put on our largest organ. But I was surprised to learn that we're fighting so many pollutants on a daily basis that like as a woman, I'm, I'm putting around five, over 515 chemicals inadvertently on my body. Now, I'm, I'm probably not putting personally that much because I only use organic and biodynamic because of my immune system. And I'm, I'm very concerned about detox. But how would you think about the skin? And this is our largest organ as it relates to those three areas that you're going to focus on. Well, yeah, no, it, it's bi-directional. So you have to think about the skin absorbing and the skin releasing. And uh, 
you talk. I was talking with a with a great uh, formulation scientist today, who's a, a topical delivery guy. He's one of the guys who worked on icy hot and asper cream, and mm -hmm. they are putting active compounds, drugs into your body through creams that penetrate into your body. And they're using a very similar cream base to what you're using for your cosmetics. And so cosmetics have this inherent delivery system in them that's a, a slow, gradual, constant delivery. So every time you put some cream on your body and there's parabens in there, you are eating a good deal of those parabens. So it's very important to remember that everything you use on your body, you have to treat like a medicine. So the creams should have uh, ingredients in them that you really wouldn't mind eating or ingesting into your body. And, and one of the best resources for looking at relative toxicity of the ingredients in the creams is the Environmental Working Group database skin deep and you can just find it online put the ingredient in there and it'll give you a one to nine hazard rating uh one being the best and nine being the worst and uh and you can look at those and a lot of those are things that are in foods as well so for instance when we make our delivery systems these liposomes and nano emulsions you can go look up the surfactants that we use in that and you'll see they all get a one whereas uh, like phosphatidylcholine gets a one, whereas raw lecithin is only a three or four. And uh, so it's important to know that the things you're putting on are really, really good for you. And then also, you know that you can use the body, uh, the skin as an organ of elimination. And uh, I used to think that only sort of gasoline like volatile chemicals and plastics would come out through the skin. But I found the data showing that uh, sweat can be almost as high in metals as urine. And so uh, sweating is a great detoxification. And we're gonna get into talking about the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic versus sympathetic. And sweating when you're relaxed is gonna be better than sweating when you're tense. So- Oh, you that's so fascinating. Wait, I hope everybody's hearing that because you know we think so much about stress and what stress does to our, our systems and our body and what that means. But if you're stressed when you're sweating, and it's not good stress. When you're stressed, you're in the sympathetic autonomic tone. Autonomic nervous system is different than your peripheral nervous system where you're thinking and acting and doing and making your muscles happen. The autonomic is the automatic side and it's controlling breath rate, blood flow and perfusion through the whole body. And the sympathetic tone to the autonomic nervous system is fight or flight. The parasympathetic, we know rest and digest, but it's rest and digest, repair, detoxify, regenerate. It's all that is when you chill out, all those processes happen because those processes take energy. And if you're in fight or flight, that means you're in some danger and you put all your energy into being on it so you can get away from danger. So even perceived danger or the stress of our workouts puts us into a sympathetic. So if we're sympathetic and we're really competitive and we're working out and sweating, we're not releasing as much as when we're parasympathetic and sitting in our infrared sauna and, and just sweating it out and being chill. Mm, that's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I wanna go deeper there. I wanna go back to the three areas. Oh yeah. So. Why is detoxification so important? It's so important because toxins are so negatively important to you. And so where do toxins work on the body? They're working at a neurological level, and this can be two aspects. One is the most obvious, cognition. And when the toxins are in your brain, they're interfering with all the connections that are in there, the firing is slower, the neurotransmitter balance is off, Toxins shift you over to a more stressed role. So your word recall isn't there. Your brain's foggy. You just can't really get through everything. That's an obvious uh, aspect of it. But then the autonomic nervous system is the other neurological thing. And I told you, when you're in fight or flight, you can't detoxify. Well, guess what? A bunch of toxins 
shift you directly into fight or flight. In the brain, there's a neurotransmitter uh, duo that handles 80% of the neurotransmission, and that's glutamate and GABA. Glutamate is the on it thing associated with memory and diligence and vigilance, but it's also more fight or flight. Then GABA is your Zen molecule that sets you down and turns up the parasympathetic, you get hungry, you get restful, and the toxins overactivate the glutamate receptors. In fact, mercury is very good at this, mole toxins are very good at this, endotoxin, which comes from leaky gut, it's little parts of bacteria that throw your immune system into a tizzy so it thinks it's got an infection and it fires up all the inflammatory hardware. That throws the whole brain into an inf inflammatory nightmare called neuroinflammation. And so toxins work on that level of both the active neurological system, cognition, and the autonomics. Then they're working at an energy level. This is toxins make you tired. They work at a mitochondrial level. And if we're in this world, we're hip to the fact that the mitochondria are the little power plants in the cell and it dysregulates them. So they start making free radicals instead of making energy. And so that's at a microcosmic cell by cell level. And then at a macrocosmic level, they dysregulate the thyroid and the adrenals. They go right out. Those are major targets of toxic stress. The thyroid, you're unable to make the most active of the hormones called T3, and that's unable to then light up the body and turn up the mitochondria and turn up uh, and, and uh, turn up all your metabolism. Of course, that's going to stick you into uh, sticky weight that you can't get rid of and they blow out the adrenals. The adrenals not being able to wake you up in the morning and take you to bed at night. Right. That gets all dysregulated, so you're wired and tired but unfunctional. Toxins do all of that. They bring down your quality of life. So, Dr. Chris, Dr. Chris. again, you're like you're rocking my world. <laughs> And I'm sure everybody that's that's listening in, we want your questions. We want to be answering these. Um, I, I think what could we do today when you think about the adrenals, when you think about the neurotoxins? I mean, you and I both personally have suffered from mercury poisoning through our amalgams that, that we no longer have in our, in our mouth. And um, that was one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever been through. But what can people do today, tonight, tomorrow, and say, hell yeah, Chris, thank you. <laughs> All right, so how do we even get into detox? And first, you know, let's just talk real big picture. And uh, I like to call it microcosm and macrocosm. So microcosm is the chemistry in the cell that gets the cell to push out the toxins. I call it pushing away, pushing away, pushing away. As long as the cell can do that, it's going to work well. Where does it push them into? Blood and lymph. So the macrocosm of detox is filtering those circulating fluids, the blood and lymph, using liver, kidney, GI, and even skin. And so there's two levels to work at it, getting the cells to pump stuff out and getting the drainage mechanisms to work. But the first thing to do is get the drainage mechanisms to work because say your blood's already filled, throwing more out from the cell and overloading and recirculating it's a big problem. And one of the things where this autonomic problem of getting locked into fight or flight ties into detoxification problems is that when you're sympathetic dominant, you lock up the drainage that's happening from the liver into the bile and into the gallbladder. So the movement of toxins, I call it directionality. They should go from the blood to the liver, to the GI, and to the toilet or from the blood to the kidney, to the urine, to the toilet. And what happens when that door between the liver and the gallbladder gets locked up is the liver starts filling up with the toxins and it has other doors that are sort of a pressure relief valve. When, the, when it gets too much, they dump them back into the blood, call it liver backfire. Mm. So we need to open up and get the drainage going. And this is where we get to you know, turn of the turn of the 19th century quality, uh, you know, uh, you know, early 19th century medicine is bitters. 
the use of bitter flavors interact with our taste buds, stimulate the gallbladder to move, and they open up that movement of bile from the liver into the gallbladder. And why does that matter? Because the same transporters that move bile move the toxins. If you're not moving bile, you're not moving toxins. So we want to open up drainage in the liver. We want to invite the bitter taste. We want to start rejecting our addiction to the sweet taste and open up to bitters, traditional bitters. You can use my bitters number nine, my bitters X, get cocktail bitters, have bitters and soda when you're out at the bar and open up that drainage. Calm the body down, which opens that up and drink a lot of water, get yourself peeing a lot. And even if you're drinking things like green tea that are uh, that are diuretics and you're following it with as much or more water, that's fine. As long as you're moving that out, peeing, so you want to go to the bathroom a lot, you want to get a lot of bitters, and you want to chill out. That's like step number one. Awesome. So we can get bitters if we're using a bitter supplement, like you have one in your amazing brand. Um, for the coaches that are on right now, if we can post Dr. Chris's brand so that people, if they are interested in, in getting these sorts of bitters, I've been using them for years. I think you handed me my first bottle of bitters and I like to take them like usually 15 to 30 minutes before I'm eating, right? To get that process started. Yeah, there, there's sort of two, there's two things that, that bitters do. One is to get the, the uh, hydrochloric acid going and, and get all the, the fluids of digestion going. And uh, the other is that big bile dump. And so they can be used both before and after. Like if you get to the end of the meal and you're feeling a little heavy, especially if it was a really fatty meal, then you take the bitters and that's stimulating the bile to go and join in with, with this food that's starting to move through there. So they kind of work in both ways. And in my line, I have a bitters number nine and a bitters X. And the bitters number nine is a little bit more shifted towards before. Uh, because there's more stomach aches, things that generate stomach acid. And the bitters X is a little bit more shifted to after. There's more of a strong bitter taste that's getting a strong bile drainage. And the bitters nine was developed by guys. And, and then I realized women needed a little bit more of a bitter punch. And uh, that's when I developed the bitter X. So that's, that's just a really little bit of a thing. So you're also saying that green tea has a lot of that bitter effect as well on our bodies? Well, no, I, I was uh, kind of getting things in too quickly. Uh, so we need, to, we need to move drainage from the liver, we need to move drainage from the kidneys, and we need to move it from the GI. So the bitters and also phosphatidylcholine, and we'll get into that one later, are for bile drainage, drainage out of the liver, Diuretics, anything that, and, and you know, in the herbals, uh, one of my favorite basic uh, kidney diuretics is uh, dandelion, which yeah. uh, ironically in French, uh, it's called pis en lit, right? Do right. you remember so, that? So Dr. Chris is married to a French woman, and I also have a French heritage, so. Uh, and uh, and pis en lit, en lit means in the bed. It means yeah. piss the bed. <laughs> because that's 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 what the French translation of dandelion is, piss the bed. And if you give too much to the kids, they wet the bed. And so getting and peeing a lot is the drainage out of the kidneys. And then having a lot of bowel movements is the drainage out of the GI tract. So making sure that you're having bowel movements once, twice a day, never letting it get constipated. You can use magnesium for that. You can use herbals for that drinking a lot of water, bitters is really good for that because the bile helps fluidize that. So the first step in detox is making sure all the faucets are open and running out. That's directionality out. Got it. So um, we've got some different tools that we can use to do this. You spoke about the difference, obviously, between being sympathetic and parasympathetic. And um, for so many of us, um, we live in a world of, of being sympathetic, and so it's something that we're constantly fighting. Dr. Chris, what are the top two or three ways that we can shift into a parasympathetic state so we can benefit from these amazing nutrients? 
the most instant method are is breathing techniques. You know, people talk about pranayama, but they get a little too stuck in the kundalini yoga thing of like these real <laughs> these energizing breaths. That's not. That's like sympathetic yoga. What is that like? <laughs> It's the sympathetic yoga, breath of fire, you know. That's not what we need. We need the slow, deep breathing, deep inhalation. Let it sit in there until it naturally goes all the way out. And then let it sit there and just let it re-regulate, pull itself back in. I hope we're all doing this together now. And it's on your time and then when it's ready. And then when you sit in that space, when it's all the way out and then it re-engages on its own. When you're in that where it re-engages, that's your body shifting over the most strongly into a sympathetic. You're into a parasympathetic. You're using your breath, but then that reset is when the heart starts to run the breath. You're using breath to try to shift over, but when you're really in the Tao of it, heart actually drives the breath up and down in these big runs, and that shifts you over into parasympathetic and feeling safety. So a lot of it is an internal thing. One of my friends who's a, a teacher of mindfulness, uh, uh, Eric Knauss, great teacher. If you find him online and you take his courses online, you'll all log on and you'll do this. Uh, he teaches about getting into a place of safety, and a lot of that is just knowing that you're safe, knowing that you're good, knowing that you're accepted, that you are God's creature is that point of safety, and that just immediately starts shifting you over there. So that's the easiest thing you can do all the time. Your long-term practices, Tai Chi, slow yogas, those are fantastic. But that little breath exercise right there works every time. That's and if you're a techie guy, you can get like heart math and you can like watch some little thing go up and down and you can breathe with it and it'll track your, your heart rate and if you need that intervention. But you really don't need anything. That's great. So we have a great question from Juliet. Hi, Juliet. Thank you for asking. How, and the question for you, Dr. Chris, is how does on detap, how does detox repair the thyroid from hypo to normal? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, some of the things are real well documented and simple, like uh, some of the hypo is is not being able to convert T4 that the thyroid makes over to T3, which is the active one. And that that's one where your TSH may not be that high, but you have all the, the symptoms of, of, uh, of hypothyroidism and you can't, you know, you can't get energy, you can't lose weight. And that's because you're not making, turning T4 to T3. And that's really well documented to be easily blocked that transition by mercury, cadmium and arsenic. So that's just one of uh, the documented examples of toxins interfering with thyroid function. There's a lot of sulfhydro groups, the kind of groups that accumulate metals that are in the thyroid. And uh, so the thyroid becomes a real easy target for toxins. And, you know, I didn't talk about the third level at which toxins affect you. And maybe I was just waiting for right now. That's at an immunological level. When the toxin level goes up, your immune diligence or vigilance goes down and there's a dysregulation that happens. So what was your fight against invaders, the innate immune system gets weak. And what was an allergic reactivity to antigens gets really overemphasized. So you start being food allergic when you're toxic and you start harboring things uh, like viruses and candida and viruses, especially Epstein-Barr, one of the main things that gets trapped in the thyroid leading to some of this thyroid dysfunction. So the toxins directly poison the thyroid and secondarily they poison the immune system, which allows the invasion of the creatures into the thyroid. Interesting, really, really um, insightful. Thank you for that. So um, we will be wrapping up really soon, but and going on to our closed Facebook community uh, 
with our nine week switch to better health to go a little bit deeper. So excited for those of you that will be um, coming with us. For those of you that um, are not part of that group, you're always welcome to um, sign up. We're, we're setting up signups. You can go to my website um, for early 2019. But Dr. Chris, you work with so many incredible individuals all over the globe, celebrities, uh, researchers. I mean, you're like the researcher of the researchers and, and really um, such an incredible expert in this field. I know that um, you've been working with Tony Robbins, for example, and I think it would be really interesting to understand a little bit about what um, somebody like Tony Robbins is, is looking for from the detox perspective and how you're helping him. Yeah, and I, I, there was a great amount of learning that happened through that. Uh, when Tony's wife first came to me and then, then with Tony and we'd meet on the phone, he had the highest level of mercury I had ever measured at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the guy's an energy explosion, so he eats a lot, and he, he went into eating tuna and swordfish. And these are the highest mercury uh, form fish, and he just really built up a high level. I mean, really intensely dangerously so. In fact, the CEO of IMAX had a similar level and he talks about that. The guy walks with a cane, he had permanent neurological damage from that. So I knew I needed to get him down and fast and we did it really fast. So I put him on a really intense protocol. But what I learned from pushing the envelope with Tony was that we were pulling things out but we weren't addressing two aspects in the beginning. Uh, we didn't have enough of this parasympathetic, sympathetic balancing and the block of neuroinflammation. This is the revving up of inflammation in the brain that these toxins do. And we didn't have quite enough adrenal support. So when I went down to his house to meet him, he said, you know, I know I'm getting my levels down. I know I have to do this, but God, my, my head hurts and, uh, and, and I have this lower back pain. There was some kidney pain. And so I'm like, well, here, let me let me give you some. Oh, and he said, I'm really tense. I said, well, let me give you some of this CBD we just developed. And he said, oh, CBD doesn't work on the brain. I, I, I take those capsules of CBD for this pain in my hip. I said, oh, yeah, 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 open up. And I gave him a couple pumps of that. And he was like this. And he just settled right down. He goes, oh, my God, that feels so much better. And then he goes, but I'm Tony Robbins. I'm supposed to be a ball of fire. And so I said, wait, open up. And I gave him Nano Mojo or adapt one of our adapted to blends. Boop, boop, boop. And he goes, Rrr. and there we had it. We had it balanced. We calmed the brain. We had enough adrenal support for the body to continuously be moving this stuff out. So CBD is one of the greatest adjuncts to set the neurological tone. So on an autonomic level, you don't get dysregulated. And so the toxins don't go to the brain and rev up the inflammation that creates all the brain fog and anxiety. And then there's adaptogens to just have your body always running because adaptogens adapt you to stress. And this is a chemical stress. And your response to stress is to jack cortisol. And then if you jack cortisol, your immune system goes down. So the adaptogens let you handle this stressful situation, still have energy, and not have those big cortisol spikes going on through it. So, so cool. there was top-down, bottom-up support and that rounded out all our programs. I love it. Love so it. everybody hates adaptogenic herbs, herbs, herbs value. value. There's so There's much so more research coming out more and more now, and, and this connection between what, what you're talking about with the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system is just so brilliant, Dr. Chris. We're so grateful. Um, I'm going to ask one more question, and um, it's coming from John. So John just shared with us that he has a broken tooth that was filled with mercury. The root is, the root is actually exposed, and the mercury is at the bottom of his, of his tooth. What, what would you say John needs to be doing right now? Well, he's got to find a good, uh, not just a mercury-free dentist, uh, but somebody who's been certified by one of the programs like IAOMT has their smart mercury removal certification. If the dentists have gone through this, they know how to get that mercury out without exposing you to the mercury during drilling it out. And they'll know some of the methods for dealing with the tooth. Hopefully they can reconstruct the tooth. You don't want to lose a tooth 
but root canals can be just as hazardous uh, or more hazardous than losing a tooth because you can get infection down there. So hopefully somebody who works with ozone for cleaning up the tooth and knows the, uh, the right removal protocols. But uh, for uh, dealing with everything now, it's, it's opening up those drainage fields, keeping them rolling, keeping glutathione levels up. You can do that with liposomal glutathione or uh, some of the whey proteins or N-acetylcysteine will support glutathione levels as well. So that's uh, sort of your sort of quick help. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris. And John, we hope um, you have the best of health and that you're able to um, make these moves and these changes quickly. All right, we're gonna jump off and I'll join you in just a minute, uh, Dr. Chris. Thank you, everybody. This was absolutely uh, tremendous. Thank you all. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Oh, sorry. I don't want to move this. Okay, so you're like imperfect. Yeah. Oh, I know we're in a hurry. Oh, well, is th this is a different one. Can you go click on the link? Hold on. I messed up. It's okay. Sorry. I'll take your time. That was his. That was definitely the right one. 